So in the last video, we made a whiskey box. Basically, things went wrong, which we addressed in the last CNC video. Um, so today, we're actually gonna start fixing some of those things. Finally. Finally, fingers crossed. Okay, so we need to figure out how to lock the motors. Thanks to your suggestions and everything you've written to us on YouTube, we figured out that that should solve our problem for the most part. So we're gonna look into it today, figure out how to lock the motors, Bless you. Sorry. What terrible cinematography. <laughs> I tried to be quiet. Okay, well, uh, that's definitely firm enough that we can change the bits. I think this is, this is what we wanted. So, guess what? We finally got the lock motors to work. It's not gonna move now that the motors are powered up during idle. And all it took was busting into the box, changing some dip switches on the circuit board, going into the settings of easel, and configuring a bunch of G-code that I never learned. That's it? That's it. What? Yeah, so, I mean, I understand there's a learning curve to this because I've been Googling all these questions. I've been seeing Invitables ads the last two weeks. Every piece of advertising that they have has the word easy in it. That's like saying the most gentle murderer. There's just a, such a steep learning curve to CNC machines that if you're even halfway interested, you're gonna see these ads and they're gonna fool you into thinking that a CNC machine is easy and it's ready to set up. There's nothing about CNCing that's easy. I know it looks easy because it's a lot of mental work and computer work before you hit go, but the machine was a nightmare to assemble. I mean, I've been over all this. The machine was a nightmare to assemble. It took us a month to finally put it together. There's four dip switches per axis. Three of the four were set the way you need them to, and the fourth one is what we had to go in and switch. Why in the world is it not shipped from the factory set like that? You're advertising your product to be easy, but then when it shows up, they have to assemble every last nut, bolt, and screw to include the computer circuit board, which isn't even set correctly, and nothing in the instructions says anything about doing that. Rant over. But, bottom line, it was really frustrating. We finally figured it out. I don't know, maybe we just shouldn't have been so naive as to think that this was an out of the box, ready to go machine. It, it was just frustrating to see how much work was involved in something that's advertised as being so easy to put together and use. No more negativity, I'm happy, we got it to work, and we're gonna keep on with our tests. Jenny and I have the propensity to do too much research without taking action, and you can't consume everything. You're never gonna learn everything there is to learn about everything until you just get your hands dirty and try it. So we just drew a line at a certain point in our research and said, you know what, we just need to buy one of these and get our hands dirty. And that's what we did. Um, but we should have just been a little bit more aware of the fact that this machine was still gonna be in its early stages of development. I'm sure in 10 to 15 years, you're gonna be able to buy a CNC machine that runs itself, but we ain't there yet. Um, problem number two is the dust shoe. Our main issue with the dust shoe is that taking it on and off in between two bit carves moves the router on the gantry. So we're gonna yank on that a little bit. If it doesn't move anything, then we may not need to do an expensive upgrade. <laughs> Here's the real part. I'm already triggered. <laughs> Ugh, this is insanity. Okay. All right, so while Jenny's struggling with the dust shoe, I'm gonna talk a little bit why we don't like it so much. It's, it's just poorly engineered. The problem is that there's two sides that are not tied together and they can move independently of one another, even though they're supposed to stay parallel. Any way that you move it and it's not perfectly straight with equal force, it gets bound up and kinked in there. And I, 
it's just it's just terribly engineered. So we're not moving the router around while we're using it, but it's still definitely sort of a nightmare to use. And the upgraded dust boot, like the socket dust boot, seems to work on the exact same principle. So I don't know if it's just the machining tolerances that are better, if there's anything better on that socket dust boot that objectively is better in the attachment part right here. You okay? Yeah, I think that still didn't, it didn't move it, I don't think. So this is why we hate the dust shoe is because it's such a fight for something that should just be able to magnetically just pop on and you forget about it. And then it almost makes me want to purposely put it on there too loose so that it's easier to take off in the middle of the two bits. But I also know that's a terrible idea, especially if you're not one to like stand right next to your CNC the whole time because if that pops off then that causes you other problems. And if you watch, the, a lot of the YouTubers that have these machines for free because they're sponsored by Inventables, they don't use the dust shoe either. I'm guessing, I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess because they hate it too. It's not worth the hassle of fighting with it that they just leave it off. We're gonna play around some of the double-sided carpet tape and see how that works um, because some people have come back saying that it doesn't keep the piece completely flat by using that tape. So we're just gonna test it out and see how it goes. So now we're gonna be experimenting with this carpet tape. Uh, Josh from I Like To Make Stuff said that he and Bob use it all the time. So I just wanna make sure that we can pull this tape off because all the carpet tape I've used in the past has been so sticky and so strong and leaves such a nasty residue, it pretty much ruins the backside of the piece. And I just wanna make sure that we can get this tape off. What are your impressions so far? It worked, so that's good. Um, we changed the bit, nothing moved. We removed and put back on the dust shoe a couple of times and nothing moved. It was a successful carve, so there's nothing really I can be like too upset about, like it worked. Yeah, the only thing that I didn't like was that the, uh, the detail pass, some of the stars with the roughing pass, it just did layers and the V-bit didn't get rid of all those ridges. And so that just means we need to increase the step over. I've already done that. Giving the V-bit more material to cut out makes a smoother, better final finish because the roughing bit roughed out too much and the V-bit didn't have enough meat in the wood to carve out to make it perfectly smooth, so. But that's a different problem for a different day. So, right, that's next just... problem is gonna be taking the piece off of oh, the CNC. Yeah and seeing how the carpet tape holds up. Oh, wow, that was actually really easy. All right, let's take it over the workbench and peel it off. That's a little... All right, so I think we got the wrong type of carpet tape. Um, this is literally just snot with string in it. Um, <laughs> I feel like I'm cleaning out the drain or something when I'm <laughs> lifting it up. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, carpet tape generally isn't supposed to be removable, so I understand that it is sticky. Um, I think I just got the wrong stuff. No discredit to Bob and Josh, I just think I grabbed the wrong stuff. A couple of you have mentioned different types of two-sided tape that are meant that's meant specifically for this purpose. I think we're gonna buy some of that on Amazon because I much prefer the tape and stick it to the wasteboard method. Yes, the concept worked amazing, and it did come right off the CNC. I was a little worried that it might peel some of the MDF off the wasteboard when I lifted it off, but none of that, it came right off really clean. I understand, yes, if you had half a brain, you could put the clamps in the right spot, but that's gonna slow us down. We're trying to become a production facility, not necessarily a master craftsman of the CNC. The easier the solution, the better, the fewer variables, the better. So we're gonna keep looking until we find a good maybe like a, a double-sided paper tape or a cloth double-sided mm -hmm. tape because I much prefer that method to the clamps. Hi. We're in nature. We're in nature. Um, so this is Future and Jenny and Davis. You, Everything you saw happened a couple days ago and we've been talking and fighting and arguing <laughs> about this for a couple of days now. Let's take a seat right here. This okay, is a pretty we'll spot. Really what we've been talking about the last couple of days is that we are judging the CNC machine based on its ability to do something so narrow mm -hmm. in the scope of everything a CNC machine can do. We've been making some signs and we've been personalizing things. Yes. That's it. So just simple engraving. We're not making parts. We're not designing like joinery with it. We're not doing cool designs and parts and components that fit together to build a trebuchet and all sorts of stuff that... We're not building a marble machine. <laughs> we're not. Yeah, we're not building uh, the world's largest marble machine music player thing. Um, so... I feel like we've been unfairly criticizing the CNC machine, or, ourselves. Should we just get the right tool for the job? Yes. And we talk a lot about this in our marketing program, so we need to just kind of take some of our own advice of narrowing down your business identity because you can't mm -hmm. do a million thousand things. You can, but then your business is never going to grow. The jack, like, consumers want someone who is a professional at a narrow range but can do a lot of things. Yes. Um, and what I mean by that is, uh, we are running a table company. We're not running a, well, whatever you want us to build, we'll build it for you. We're not running that kind of business anymore. We're, we're focusing in on kitchen tables, coffee tables, and cutting and serving with tableware sort of stuff. Right. And so we're forcing a CNC machine that can do a whole bunch of different things and forcing it to do one thing. Flawlessly. Flawlessly, and we're criticizing it for not doing it great. So we really just need a machine that can personalize things mm -hmm. and a much better machine to do that instead of trying to force a toy CNC to be a professional uh, personalization machine. We just need to get a laser, like a Glowforge or a Muse or something like that because a toy laser is going to do way better for us than a toy or even a professional CNC, CNC would. Yeah. We didn't conquer the CNC. The CNC sort of conquered us. Um, Which, hey, maybe that's, I mean, that's, maybe that's okay. People need the CNC for a very broad spectrum of things. Right, and but we can't let our pride get hurt because we couldn't figure out how to use the CNC. We could, we totally could, but it would take us a lot of time and it would be really distracting mm -hmm. from the core of our business, which is tables and personalization. So we're going to look into different lasers. If you guys have experience with lasers and customizing stuff, I would love to hear your feedback. We definitely want to do our research this time and make sure yes. we get a machine that's going to do everything that we need it to. But other than that, we are probably going to sell our CNC machine. I don't know. We'll we haven't see. decided yet. I haven't but, fully decided that part. Um, anyway, uh, we're leaning towards the high-end model Glowforge right now. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't like the cloud-based software. Um, if the internet goes down or whatever, we're we're screwed. So I really want something else. Um, but yeah, but that's just initial thoughts. So. Yep. So if you've got any suggestions, please let us know. We don't want to make the same mistake we did with the CNC yes. and get the wrong ones. So, yeah. all right, we're going to finish our walk. Thank you for watching this saga of the CNC. <laughs> Hit the like button if you're still around. Subscribe if you haven't. We're just documenting our journey of starting a woodworking business in the Houston area. Check out our marketing program if you're interested in developing your own business identity and why you need to narrow down the number of products that you make um, so you can sort of develop a business identity. But other than that, I'm Thanks tired. for taking a walk with us. Yeah, my arm's getting tired. You've basically so. exercised today. <laughs>